You are now listening to The I. Walter Show. Real talk about nothing. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's I. Walter. I. Walter. Yes, it's I, Walter, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I, Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild-mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I, Walter. It's I, Walter. Yes, that's me. Hey, it's I, Walter. Hey, it's Friday again. I can't believe how fast these weeks have been going. I actually, this afternoon, I got to go down the shore, um, down to Atlantic, oh, excuse me, Atlantic City, because um, I'm going to a comic book convention again with, um, actually on Saturday, I'm leaving for it on Friday for Kevin Smith and Stan Lee, so I'm actually looking forward to that. Um yeah, I mean, God, these weeks have been going fast, folks. Um, yeah, I haven't done anything since I did uh, the special show with Ryan. So, um, you know, trying to do this at least because it might be another. It's going to be another weekend of me not doing anything else. So, right now I'm watching some TV. It's funny. I, I just well, actually, I watched RuPaul first. It was really good this week. Actually, it was. Um, there's like five people left. It's actually now four. And uh, unfortunately, it's getting really down to the part you hate seeing these these guys leave because they work so hard. Um, but they did on Hello Kitty. It was pretty funny. Um, yeah, but I mean, the last thing I talked about, I guess, so I did a special show on Ryan, which I really appreciate. I may be able to call Ryan and maybe I can just do an interview on Skype with him and basically broadcast it that way. Um, I reactivated my Skype account. I haven't given out the number. I haven't done any live shows yet, but I think in the future I might go that direction. If I can get Skype to work for me and I can record my shows, I can probably give it out and try to get some live calls as well. Um, That's my goal. Uh, A friend of mine, Matt Torrance, actually had asked me, hey, you know, can you – can you um, help me set up my Skype to see how it works? Can you Skype me? And it gave me an idea. I was like, yeah, I've been wanting to do that for a while. I have a bit to talk about, I guess, a lot to talk about. I always have a lot to talk about. That's my problem, though. I don't know when to stop talking. Um, that's why I call this show basically a, you know, basically it is a show about nonsense. Um, before I go into what happened, because uh, yesterday, or the yesterday, it was Wednesday. I actually won to – and I was really looking forward to it. It wasn't as disappointing as it was meeting David Tennant and Billy Piper, but it was still really disappointing. I had like this man on a pedestal, not Billy Piper or David Tennant. Um, well, not Billy Piper anymore. At least David Tennant I still do. No, I'm talking about I went to this concert on Wednesday down at the TLA in Philadelphia right on South Street. It's right across from Jim Stakes. Um, I wasn't seeing um, Al Jurgensen though, and I was kind of really disappointed. But I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, yeah, so there's that. Anyway, um, that was I wanted to like actually after I read I heard about this on Rush Limbaugh, I was like I got to. He was talking about something, and it actually he didn't realize it because he read this from some other source. It was in um, Narstown, where I live, that he was referring to, and he didn't even realize it, Rush Limbaugh. And it was about this el- elderly man uh, loses loses his house subsidiary after um, they find a prostitute under his bed. And the man's like 70 freaking years old. So, um, yeah, so he lost his, um, you know, his house, ha- his, um, the money he got from the government for his house. And again, he was in his 70s with a fucking prostitute under his bed. I mean, I got, in one way, I'm really pissed off. I'm just so sick of I, – I always tell people, I said, hey, in Narstown, there's more money in, in, in Pennsylvania than anywhere else. There's like – there's got a bunch of freeloaders. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat or say 
because um, I guess Rush says, oh, I don't call people freeloaders or anything like that. I never said that, which he doesn't. He really doesn't. But you know what? I'm not going to hold back from saying it. We do have a bunch of fucking deadbeats and uh, um, whatever that live sponge off the government. He said he wouldn't mention it. I will. I have nothing to lose. I have like a zero audience practically most of the time. So what do I have to lose? What do you take from me? I have nothing. I'm like in death up to my ass. So uh, rude awakening. Yeah, we do have a, b- b- a bunch of deadbeats in this country who don't want to work. So when I read this, I mean, this is a 70-year-old man anyway. Yeah, he's pretty much um, should be on, um, what do you call it, government assistance, I guess, at his age. He should be retired. I don't know what the whole situation is. But, it, um, it, yeah, it's just ridiculous. So, I mean, I, one way. And another way is, like, dude, if you can still get up at 70 years old, like, uh, kudos to you. Um because I'm like 48. And by the way, one thing I'm enjoying, it was funny today. I have to I have to go on a sidetrack like I always do. Because I was going to pr- pr- basically go through my new segment and then I'll talk about everything else. But I'm like going to work today and it was this woman, this girl. She was actually pretty hot looking. She's walking her fucking kid in spandex. And she's, you know, kid in a stroller, I mean, a baby. And she's she looked pretty hot from behind. She was actually. But she's texting the whole fucking time. She's not even paying attention walking her kid in the stroller. She's too busy texting. It's like, can you put your fucking phone down for five minutes at least? So, and even on the way to work, it, it must be it must be a uh, a dedicated day that every woman had to wear spandex pants, black shiny spandex, because that's all they were wearing. Either of those are yoga pants. So, in one way, I was in my glory. You know, basically, some were ten Kleenex and some were basically a, a Kleenex and a half. So. Um, I'm not going to explain that one. You can figure it out on your own. Um, yeah, so there was that one. I basically want to admit. Hey, you know what? I got this off of this woman. I, I she's she's really like a sweet lady um, that I met at one of these horror fest. Her name I get her name wrong. It's uh, Genova Rossi, I think. She's adorable though, but she put on her page. Um, I guess on Monday, and I, I had to laugh my ass off. Literally, had to laugh my ass off. Um, she posted this little, you know, these statements or whatever, and it says, having a shitty Monday? Remember, you're somebody's reason to masturbate. It's like, I'm nobody's reason for masturbation, trust me. But, um, yeah, I thought it was I was adorable. I, I, I love her anyway. Um, yeah, the elderly man, though, that was that was pretty funny. Um, I got a bunch on my, my Facebook page. Yeah. Um, but that one was really good. Yeah, everybody's ta- um, discussing. I think Rush did. People at work are talking about that Amtrak accident. And even Rush said they're trying to – like the government wants to put more money into um, – you know, this was in Philadelphia too, which is kind of scary because I was down in Philadelphia. I guess my parents were worried about that too. Oh, did you get in um, – were you in the middle of that accident? Well, that was on the train track. So uh, – and I drove down to Philly on Wednesday. So No. But, yeah, the guy was going too fast. Um, it is pretty scary because I like taking the trains and, you know, I consider it. Um, but, yeah, I guess Rush's thing was, yeah, we want to put more money into, um, you know, into the, um, the you know, I want to say train system. But, yeah, they want to put more money into that. And it's like well, the guy was going way too fast. It says that Amtrak uh, derailed. In Philadelphia, which I was on Wednesday, this happened on Tuesday night, um, because it was going 100 miles an hour around the bend. It was like going way too fast. It's like, dude, it's nice that you're trying to get there on time, but that's ridiculous. It said the limit for the curve the guy went around was 50 miles an hour. Um, Proceeding the curve was about 70 miles an hour. They're saying he was going 100, so... Um, yeah, that's a that's a shame because a lot of people got killed or seriously injured. So yeah, that's still in discussion. Um, hey, you know what? That was funny. I actually I want to see. I wanted to see. You can actually get it. I think on CBS's webpage. I gotta look at this real quick. But Howard Stern was on. Um, I love the man. Um, I have a lot of respect for him. I told some guy tonight years ago. I actually saw Howard Stern. Um, down in Philadelphia for um, the Belladonna, um, well, the the zookeeper we used to call him around here, his um, on the radio. He was the competition for Howard in Philly. Howard was out in New York though, 
Um, but he basically crushed the man, Howard. Yeah, it was CBS. Um, but I met the person, the man in person one time, Howard Stern, and, and I, it was funny. I was getting my book signed. A friend, a friend grabbed my book. I asked him, what happened to my book? And he says, I don't know, but I got two bucks. It's like, yeah, no no offense, but no shit, Sherlock, because one of them were mine. Um, so Howard, like, stopped the, the fucking line, and he just basically said – he was pointing at me. He was pointing at the books. There was a pile of books. I think it was private parts. He basically you know, told these people, hey, bring a book over here. He, he signed it, and then he pointed at me and says, give it to this guy. He was very nice. So I have the most deep aberration for Howard Stern after that. He's a very, like, down-to-earth man. He comes off of being, like, really – you know, a loud mouth, everything like that. No, but the man's very nice. And I, you know, God, I was, I, he looks out for his fans. Anyway, um, I really went off track, but yeah, Howard was on um, earlier this week on uh, David Letterman because he's doing the countdown. And uh, I didn't know about it until a friend mentioned to me. The same friend I actually went to the ministry concert with, Todd J. Thomas. Um, I do want to get into the ministry thing too, by the way. So don't don't uh, don't lose your uh, patience with me yet. I know it's probably pretty easy to do so because I just seem to blab on and talk about nothing. That's why it's called that again. Um, but again, you know, it was funny right before I went to the ministry concert. Me and a friend, we re I rewatched it. He watched it the first time. He bought a copy of ryan's movie um logston did i say ryan logston well ryan's movie i really liked it i liked it even more so the second time i watched it um unfortunately like everything i actually comes out of my mouth i get it all fucked up and i say something wrong but um got a little bit of the continuity wrong with ryan's movie but um you know please Go to Ryan's webpage and kind of give him some support. I want to do an interview with him. He wants to do one with me. Um, he was actually doing a live one last night on a podcast with somebody else. So, um, you know, I hope that turned out for you, Ryan, because, you know, dude, I really do like your film. Hey, by the way, it was funny when we came. I'm, I'm trying to keep it going, I guess. I, I apologize because I like to talk to Ryan more. He gave me a, a lot of information. Um that town, by the way, it's called Agony is the name of the movie. That's like basically the foundation for a lot of his storylines, which is really cool because the man basically made a whole freaking fictional town that goes around these characters. So, I mean, Ryan is a very smart guy. He's a very intelligent guy. So I kind of um, like to see him do some more. Anyway, it was funny because last night when we were coming home from the ministry concert, which is going to be a whole story in itself, I think. Um. The one friend was checking on his iPhone. Hey, I got that iWatch, too. That's a different story. I'm, I'm babbling around. But Supergirl, um, they have a full-length preview. Um, that's going to be also on CBS, just like Letterman. And I was kind of glancing over while I was driving and um, watching what he was looking at. And Supergirl was like, oh, yeah, this looks pretty bad. And it's like, yeah, because they changed some of the characters a little bit, maybe a little bit too too much for my liking. Um, they changed the character look of Jimmy Olsen, and I kind of did not like that. I mean, Jimmy Olsen's always been this dorky kid. I like to keep it that way, um, and they made him somebody else, and I just don't like it. Anyway, oh, that's another thing I had to mention. Um, but I watched it, and there's like there's some like grains of of goodness in uh, the Supergirl series, it looks like. I mean, there's some stuff. I don't like the girl, particularly the actress, but when she's in the full getup, because at least she is wearing a Supergirl costume, I think she looks pretty fucking cool. I really almost want to see it now. So there was that. I'm kind of leaving ministry for the last thing because it was some things that were very interesting about that. Anyway, by the way, I'm skipping around like I normally do because my mind, just it's like all over the place all the time. It's just something I can't help. But there was some story I put on my Facebook page, and it just basically said um, – it states that this baby, this little baby girl – I mean, they, thank God they don't show any pictures, and they show her crying though. But she got beheaded by ISIS, and um, this was on right – right – like, you know, um, the right side, there's the right conservative and left radical. Whoops, did I say that out loud? But it is called rightwingnews.com. 
And it basically says that ISIS basically uh, beheaded a little girl. Um, you know, I guess they're, they they taped it or filmed it or whatever, and they found the the footage of this girl getting beheaded. And they don't show it, thank goodness. But, I mean, that's really sad, folks. That is really sad. Um, this is more up my alley because I'm going to go to a comic book convention this week and see – Kevin Smith and Stan Lee. Um, hey, if you ever go over to King of Prussia Mall, you got to. Ch- I want to check it out myself. That there's a um, comic book store called Uncanny. It had a different name. It was called Comic Books and More, I think, before. Somehow they changed the name, and then they changed their location from the court of the King of Prussia to the King of Prussia side. Now they're moving back over the court because they were revamping their store, and it looks really fucking sweet, dude. People. Because there could be women, I hope, that listen to my show. Um, but it looks really awesome, this store. I really want to check it out. I'm looking at the pictures now. Um, it's it's a cool store. I mean, there's also a really cool comic book store. I forgot to get their card down in um, Philadelphia that me and a friend checked out yesterday before we went to the ministry concert. Because we were kind of trying to get in there when ministry started. Al Jurgens didn't go until 1030, though. So um, he didn't finish until like. 12, I think, or whatever. He was on for an hour and a half. The opening bands were on two hours apiece. That was ridiculous. Anyway, that's a different story. I'm going to go into that in a moment. I keep on saying it. I haven't yet. Um, But anyway, yeah, it was funny. I was just looking at some stuff I posted on my Facebook page, and I really hope they don't do it because I love this movie. I I adored all the fucking girls in this movie. The one looked like, um, what do you call it, from the X-Files at first? I thought it was. And they, they, I guess she got this all the time in one actress. I'm talking about the movie. I'm, I apologize. I'm going off without actually finishing my, my train of thought. Is um, the movie called The Craft. It says, like, basically they want to do a remake of The Craft. And, and somebody says, please don't do it, I guess. You know, they take every fucking movie and then they redo them. And it's like, that's an incredible movie. Don't touch that fucking movie. And I, I actually loved all those girls. I, I had the hots for all those girls in that movie. Um, yeah, it was posted, by the way, on uh, newnownext.com. That's a mouthful. But I swear I swear it is new now, newnownext.com. So, yeah, that's a funny name for a web page. But yeah, I, I literally – I don't think any of those girls were that – even the one who played like the the crazy uh, girl she goes nuts at the end. I don't remember their names. I'm looking at it because their names aren't posted, so I'm not going to look it up because I want to keep this going so I can go to bed. Um, but yeah, all those girls were, were freaking hot and um, it was a great movie. It was like actually – because um, that's what got me into watching Charmed was the craft I think is – some like came out of somehow, even though they were kind of different, but it is about witchcraft. Um, I guess since uh, the craft was such a great movie that they decided, hey, let's do a, um, a TV show about witches, you know, about a, uh, a coven or whatever. So they got charmed out of it. If I remember correctly, that's what I think I read somewhere. Anyway, um, yeah, I want to keep um, – I, I can't help it. I'm just going to have to look at this. But it was on the conservative tribune going back and forth. And it seems like Obama is going to try to attack Fox News, you know, because he's – you know, Fox News gives you the real news. And, um, you know, hey, our administration right now and most of the media doesn't want to see uh, news being portrayed properly. They want to make sure it's uh, tinted to their – uh, way of thinking. So that really pissed me off. Uh, and I, I didn't bother to read it, honestly. But anyway, there's some updates. There's some guy named, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but his last name is Butterfield. And I, I'm, um, I think I named the other article because I'm just jumping around, folks, tonight. I just want to get this done with and hope I can entertain a few people. Um, but yeah, it's they reportedly Marvel's new Spider Man. It said, and it was on comicbookmovie.com, and they said they got this guy. It's A S A. Is that Asa Butterfield? The the kid is supposed to be eighteen years old, but he looks like he's twelve. I mean, you might as well get the kid from um, 
from Gotham because he looks older than this guy. And he's supposed to be 18 years old. He's going to play the new Spider-Man now. So is this going to mean like another reboot or are they just going to go right into it? Because, like, yeah, Peter Parker was like a kid um, basically in the comic books, a teenager. But this guy looks like he's in – he just got – he's a, a tween and he's going to be playing a new Superman. It's like this is a little bit depressing now. So, yeah, if you look at uh, comicbookmovie.com, you'll see that article. And um, they, it's not etched in stone. They actually got some other people, but it just kind of scared me. Hey, this one I really had to post on my webpage, going back to stuff that makes me happy. Um, it, it's titled, Great News, Teacher Who Forced Grade Schoolers to Send Cards to Cop Killers Fired. I think this was in New Jersey, too. So I was, like, really happy. This was on right, right Wing News. So I really could care less about reading it. Hey, the title just was enough for me. It's in Orange County, though. Or, no, Orange. No, I apologize. It's in New Jersey. How's that? Um, Yeah, you know what? If I start reading this article, I'll fuck it up so bad you're not going to want to hear it. But, yeah, some school teacher, because I think I read this before, at least to myself, maybe not on my show. But, hey, and this was uh, posted May 14th. Um, but yeah, she fucking got fired. It's a good, good fucking riddance for you, you dummy. Just kidding. I just had to get that out. Um, yeah, another interesting article. I'm not going to go in these articles. I always really screw up the way I say them. I really fuck them up. So why, why even bother? Um, but there was an article in the right wing news that says mother sues school board for teen, teens arrest and suspension over NRA shirt. So, you know, the guy's pro-guns and stuff. What is wrong with that? It's part of our amendment, folks. And the kid wears a T-shirt. He's supporting it. It's just a teenager. Dude, I wore worse T-shirts that when I was in high school. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the freaking T-shirt. You just got a bunch of idiots that are so liberal. They, they don't want to see anything that's not uh, their way of thinking. Um, I'm trying to get to this one article. There's some really good ones on my webpage if you go to – go to it on um, Facebook, but this one like kind of was, was heart-wrenching. There was one night. I just broke me up. This is one of them, though, and this was from foxnews.com, and it says, quarterback keeps fourth-grade promise to take friend with Down syndrome to the prom. So, again, I don't want to fuck up the names because I, you know, I don't want to ruin these stories like I always do, and I want to keep it kind of flowing, and it says Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, so that's really cool. This girl, she's got Down syndrome. She is adorable, folks, though. She is so cute. And I guess a kid who grew up with her, um, this guy, um, you know, good-looking guy, young teenager kid, you know, he kept his promise to this cute little girl. She's got Down syndrome. You know, they both grew up together. They both went to school together. Um, You know, and he said, I'm going to, you know, basically take you to your prom. When she got old enough, and he actually did. And it's got a plethora of pictures, and they are so adorable. The girl is just, like, cute, really cute. And, I, you know, I love seeing stuff like that. But, again, I don't want to fuck up the way I read these freaking stories. Um, this one's kind of neat, too. This is on the right-wing news. I got a lot of right-wing news. Thank God. It's nothing else. But it says, teen rally after South Carolina high school bans American flag in parking lot. So the kid basically, you know, was trying to be patriotic. He has the American flag. I've seen that before people, you know, because it's getting around the Memorial Day. You know, hey, if the kid wants to be patriotic and he wants American flag, more power to you, dude. But, yeah, he got suspended for having an American flag. And this was down in South Carolina again. Um, he has a, they show pictures. He's got on the back of his pickup truck. He's even got that one. Um, I forget. I think it's for uh, uh, work. Oh wait, here it is. Uh, the the POW flags. It's it's. I forget what that stands for. P O capital P capital O capital W flags flag in the American flag. So the guy was just being patriotic. Kid from high school, and he gets fucking suspended. Can you believe that? Um, dude, uh, fight to power, trust me. Um, another interesting story, unfortunately, this is the Huffington Post. But the story is titled, Accused Murderer Confesses, Confessed, It Felt Good Knowing My fon- Fiancé Was Dead. She basically killed her fiancé on a trip they had taken. Um, the, um, I'm trying to look at it real quick. 
I'm not going to pronounce her name, but it basically happened in the Hudson River, I guess outside, just outside of New York. Yeah, this girl basically committed, uh, k- uh, killed her fiance, and she felt good about it. I was like, how do you feel good? You're a wacko. So I kind of made the joke because it always happens with women. They, you know, they find these wacko guys and they go in the prison. They want to marry them. And it's like, well, I said, is she available then? You know, can I, can I date her? Because it seems like all these women like to date these nutcase guys. So why can't I date a nutcase woman? Not going to work. She'll probably still find something wrong with me. Um, anyway, that didn't make any sense. I realized that. Um, hey, you know what? It's been a long time since I've seen anything that really – I wish I could find that story that really just got to me. I, it didn't go on my page. There was a couple I did mention, uh, like the one with the girl with the Down syndrome. That was really cute. Anyway, one girl I, – I used to come home from work when I first started where I work. And, um, you know, I haven't really – you know, since she's changed her look, this is Miley Cyrus. I, I lost all interest for her. I was like, she was such a cute kid. I used to love Miley Cyrus. I used to love that Hannah Montana show. I stumbled upon it because I worked in the daycare uh, cleaning up after the kids. And, um, and um, you know, these kids used to, like, be obsessed with Miley Cyrus. And it was like, why, is these, or why are these kids, they were kids, what do you expect? They like kids shows. But what is this about this Miley Cyrus and this um, Hannah Montana? So I started watching it as a joke. I was like, you know what? This show is freaking hilarious. So I sort of wa- I watched them all. I really liked Miley Cyrus. I watched a lot of her movies she was in before she, you know, went south on her uh, looks and everything else and her music. And it was like, you know, it was like, what happened? You were such a great kid. I really had high hopes for, her, and I never seen anything after that that. Um, you know, it was. I even bought a ticket for her last year to uh, to go to her concert, and it was like, you know what? You know, I was hoping, I was hoping and praying that she'd go back to being the old Miley Cyrus that everybody knew and loved. It didn't happen, so I ended up selling my ticket off. And it's like, you know what? There was years that went by that I really wanted to get a ticket for Miley Cyrus, and it never happened. So um, here, there's some video she did with. Um, I'm trying to look at it um, with Andriana Grande or whatever. I don't even know how to fuck to say her name. But anyway, Miley does a, a video with her, and it was like, this is the Miley that I really loved. I, I love listening to her. She was so adorable. Um, she still has that bad haircut. She's got all those freaking tattoos now, which she, she's not going to get rid of, unfortunately. But I like to see the old Miley come back. I know a lot of people thought she was very annoying, but... Um, no, she was adorable, and she just is just to me. She's just like white trash, and it's a shame. Cause she she was she's got a lot of potential, and I'm like watching this music video she did with Ariana Grande. If I said it right, and it was like this is the Miley that you know, and even that and Ariana Grande. I keep on getting her freaking name wrong, but these two kids were really good. They're adults now, but they. They, they they just like they never grew up almost. They in fact they they want they want the opposite direction. They act like big freaking kids now. But yeah, um, they do this like so, it's some song I can't remember the name of it. Um, but it was really good. It was the old Miley way of singing, and um, it's a really popular song. I'm trying to look at the name of it, but um, yeah, it's very touching. It was like yeah, this, I wish. That you know, I w- I'm I'm still praying for her that she'll grow out of this wacky stage she's going through. You know, I don't know how long it's going to last for Miley, but I don't care about the other one at all. So, uh, um, I could care less. But yeah, I used to, I used to love Miley Cyrus. I thought she was so adorable and really cute kid, and had a lot of potential. And that just went south for the longest time, and still probably will. I don't know. Anyway, another. Uh, Interesting story from the local area. It was on myfoxphilly.com. And it says correctional officers charged with looting, looting a convenience store. Now, this was posted the 14th also. That was yesterday. But these two women, um, yeah, you know, they're African-Americans. They were 
correctional officers, and they basically loot a store um, to support what's going on in Baltimore. And it's like, you're correctional officers, officers. You should know fucking better. And I don't know if they realize this, ladies, but some of these these police officers that are getting um, are getting a re- are, are getting um, you know a fined or going to spend some time in prison are also African American. So you're not like you're you know you should know better. You should be supporting your fellow officers, not going in and becoming one of the rioters. It doesn't make any sense. So um, I'm trying to look where it happened. It says. Um, 7-Elevens on uh, 7-Eleven on April 25th. So they vandalized the 7-Eleven, I guess. I mean, it, come on, grow up. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm just like I'm, I'm losing my temper of people like that. Um, there are some other touching stories. Yeah, there was one. This poor guy. Um, this is Philly.com. I wasn't going to really read this, but I got it up now. Uh, dad calls 911 after leaving his baby daughter in a car. I was like, okay, here's another. Um, but they play the voice because uh, the the conversation because he called 911. The man literally forgot that his kid fell asleep, his, his infant fell asleep in the back of his car, um, his SUV, and he was taking a train to work. So he left the car parked and left the poor his poor daughter in the back. But he got to work or was on the train. It was like. Oh no! I forgot about my daughter to take her to daycare, so he called nine one one as you know, right before, as he was trying to get a train back to the, his car. Um, so you can hear the guy, and he was really upset. Um, this is Massachusetts, Massachusetts, ah, Massachusetts father calls nine one one. So yeah, I mean, at least the man had the decency to realize he made a mistake, and the kid was all right, by the way. Anyway, um, another goofy story, and I made a joke out of it. It's not funny either. Woman left kid in car on Mother's Day to go drinking uh, as the police statement. This was on Huffington Crime, unfortunately. Huffington. I hate that fucking page. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to say it out loud. But, uh, yeah, Haley Haley Dawn Hampton is her name. Yeah. She left her kid in her car to get drunk. Um, she's 28 years old, and I said, yeah, we know where she went after that. She went to the f- fucking, uh, um, where did I just go? Um, ministry concert as well, I'm sure. I was being sarcastic about the ministry thing, but I have to talk about that. I haven't talked about it yet, and it's probably half an hour into, oh, it's after half. Um, two other interesting stories, going to talk about ministry. I said I was going to talk about it in the next minute, and it's like the next half hour. Anyway, <coughs> these pictures have been floating everywhere on every web page now about this girl who got skin cancer but spent too much time in those tanning booths it's a shame too she literally looks like she's got like she went through like a solar flare her face is all like burned up in spots she's 27 years old she takes a selfie of and it, it said it went viral um where she got skin cancer from spending like and i think it's like four hours at a time in these tanning booths um, if you go to my webpage, last story, it lo- it is pretty freaky. The pictures, it looks like like almost one of these horror movies. It, and it's titled "They Stumbled Across This in the Woods," and it's been uh, it says beneath it was a terrifying, awesome secret. It's a bunker, um, and that was viralnova.com. There's these pictures that. Um, Show this bunker underground that was like hidden for years. They they stu- they like literally stumbled upon it, and it it did does look like something from a horror movie though. It's pretty pretty freaky looking. Anyway, um, yeah, I really got in this show, so it's gonna be kind of tough to edit now. Um, I did go to, to me and a friend Todd went to um, ministry last night. Uh, Al Jurgensen just looked like total shit. I'm sorry. Um, it was funny. He said, oh, I, I went to Pat Stakes. He could have went right across because he was at, um, what do you call it? He was at um, the TLA. Why didn't you just go to Al? Why didn't you just go to the steak place right across the street from the TLA, which was, um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, blank on the name, but it's better than Pat's in my opinion. 
Um, it's like right on South Street. There's this steak, steak shop. He goes to the Pats and he says, oh, I got the shits from me. He literally said that, too. I got the shits from eating Pat's steak. He says, oh, Philadelphia has the worst steaks. And they're supposed to have the best steaks. He literally said that, too. It's like, dude, you just don't know which ones to go to. I know Pat's has got a big name, but yeah. Um, the one right on South Street is the one I've always gone to, me and friend Todd and other friends I had in the, years ago. We used to go down. We used to go to the one right on the corner of South Street. Um, it's got like that old style look to it, too. I mean, it's drawn a blank, and it'll probably come to me after I'm done the show. So anyway, the show itself of... Rob Zombie, I'm Rob Zombie, I'm sorry, because they're all industrial bands, so that's why I'm thinking of Rob Zombie. But, um, Al Jurgens and Cho, he had two opening bands, each one was on for two hours. The second one was pretty decent, but the guy's voice, it was a German band, it was an industrial German band. They were showing some bad movie that I did actually watch at one point, some German movie where the Nazis didn't die, they actually got a rocket ship and they went to the moon and they hit out there to plan an attack on um, on the U.S. years later. Some bad campy movie. Well, they put that in the background while they were singing their songs, this industrial band. The band wasn't too bad, but you expect like an opening band to be just that, not be on for two fucking hours. So it got a little annoying after a while. And their whole theme was like the guy's voice sounded like the guy from Rammstein. So it was like, dude, you're you're basically copying Rammstein almost. So it was cool, but it's like, I don't know. And there was the woman; they sang some of their stuff in English and some of it in German. But the guy was going back and forth. A lot of it was in English, though, um, which is kind of cool because you got Rammstein where you can actually understand what they're saying almost. So and you know what? I don't even know the name of the band. So. Um, but I wasn't there to see them. I was there to see Al Jurgensen. So he comes out and it was like, who is this old fat hillbilly that has a really high voice? It was like, man, I'm Al Jurgensen. And it was like, oh my God, is that that? Is that, that's not Al Jurgensen. They probably hired somebody out. So I had to look it up online. If you ever heard that song, um, what is that song? Um, something Joe, you know, that, that, uh, there's that uh, song from the dance clubs here ago, go something, uh, something Joe or whatever. Like there was this hillbilly singing, and that's what Al Jurgensen's voice sound like—this high pitched, annoying hillbilly voice. And it's like, what happened to Al Jurgensen? Because years ago, when I was like in my twenties, that was a long time ago. Um, when I first got introduced to ministry. Originally, he was a really decent-looking guy because he, he tried to get signed on to a record label. The only way he could do it was by trying to do something he really disliked. So he made some album, and um, it's horrible. But then right after that, he, he did more almost what he wanted to do. So the problem was I had this discussion with, with a guy at work tonight. I said, well, unfortunately, you know, he got – really good for the longest time, Al Jurgensen, but he did more drugs. He did a lot more drugs, and it was kind of obvious because the man's only like in his late 50s, and he looks like he's in his 80s, and he just looks really hideous. He's like a pile of shit at this point, the way he looks. And don't get me wrong, because I love you, Al Jurgensen. I think you're great. I mean, I put you on the pedestal for years, and I saw you last night. I was like, what the fuck happened to you? You look like a piece of shit now. And I mean, I love the man. So we obviously let himself go down the down to the shitter. I mean, the man's a genius either way, to a point. Because the only thing is, he's on the opposite side of the spectrum that I am on on politics. Like this man hates America. He hates politics altogether. He's he's looking for that perfect utopia where there is no rules. It's like, dude, you're a nutball. And he got worse as he's gotten older. He's gotten much worse because I respected that man for years. And now I kind of like – I went to this concert. I tried to just tune out that he was Bush bashing and he was actually Obama bashing folks. So, you know, he wasn't leaving anybody out. Basically, he's – again, he's not for government at all. It's like, dude, you need a government. That's the only way you make things fair. Unfortunately, right now, you have a government that favors the people who don't want to do anything to better themselves. 
So I have a total disagreement with that. Anyway, um, it got crazy. There was a mosh pit. I t- I'd taken a ton of pictures. I put them on my Facebook page. So anyway, it's Walter P. Interante, I-N-T-E-R-R-A-N-T-E, if you'd like to look me up on Facebook. And um, yeah, it got – it was loud enough – with the other opening bands, I don't even know what the first one was. We weren't even there for that. We kind of stayed outside. The second one, we had a, no choice because Al Jurgens was supposed to go on at 9 o'clock. He didn't go on until 1030. So I was telling people that most of the time when you have these musician, musicians come out, they put bottles of water because they get really parched really quick from singing. They put out tons of cups of beer for Al Jurgens. And he drank them all. He was actually given to audience members. And the man was like sloshed before he came in. There was people there that were stoned out of their fucking mind. And unfortunately, they were very nice. Don't get me wrong. There was one guy who looked just like the young Al Jurgensen. And there was this African-American guy. He was into the whole thing. He looked like Al Jurgensen. And, but the thing was, the African-American guy who looked like Al Jurgensen, he was stoned out of his fucking mind before he even got in there. And... He was banging into people and moshing. He kind of banged into me, but you know, you just kind of like gently um, push him off. And it was funny though. I felt bad for the guy, but he was so fucking stoned though, folks, that my friend Todd said he was thought he was texting somebody and taking pictures, but he wasn't doing anything. He was too. He was so out of it. He didn't realize what he was doing. He thought he was actually taking pictures and texting. And he wasn't doing a thing. He wasn't doing anything. So it was like, wow, I, I saw him texting, I thought, or taking pictures. I didn't realize that he wasn't doing anything. He was just – thought he was pushing buttons. He was really out of it. So they finally, after a while, because he stepped on my one friend's toe. A ba- he has a bad toe. And he was like, yeah, he stepped on my fucking bad toe. And it was like, dude, I feel bad for you, Todd. So anyway, eventually they threw the guy out. I mean I felt bad for the guy because he, he was harmless. He was really harmless. He was just so fucking stoned. So that was the other problem. We had people in there that were smoking pot, I guess. I didn't smell a thing. And trust me, I'm a very sensitive nose because I don't drink and I've never done any sort of drug. I just sound like I did. And anyway, um, most of the people that were sloshed and stuff, they were pretty – like usually you, you, t- you hear about people that are stoned or I guess or drunk and they're out of control. These people were out of control but they knew not to – like if you kind of – Gently push them away or like say, dude, you know, just tap on the back, you know, hey, I don't appreciate this. They they let you go. They were they were harmless. But it did get really out of hand. The mosh pit got incredibly large. It took over the whole fucking floor. And most of the people got floor seats because it was a standing floor only. So nobody wanted to pay a hundred and some dollars to see Al Jurgensen from above. You wanted to be as close as possible, and it turned into a fucking mosh pit, the whole floor. So – and the girls got into it too. There was one really cute girl. She was uh, she was headbanging and me and my friend Todd were right behind her. And I was like, dude, I'd love to see a better uh, glimpse of her ass. She was a really cute girl because we were afraid she was going to be pretty hideous looking. She actually, actually ended up being cute. There was a lot of cute girls there though, even older women. There was a lot of older people because this was like 30 years ago when Al Jorgensen really started out. So you know, you got people my age and older that are coming to see him still. So it was kind of good and it was funny. This one guy was like smoking a cigarette inside the building. It was like, oh, great. I'm going to smell like cigarette smoke. And, and it was a real cigarette. I seen him lit it up, light it up. But I don't know how he did it, but he inhaled all the fucking smoke. And it's like, dude, that's not good for you either. One, you shouldn't be smoking inside. Two, I do appreciate that you're not getting the cigarette smoke all over the, the place. But you're killing yourself faster from inhaling the smoke and not even um, blowing it out. You're like basically in, inhaling it and keeping it in. So there were some really crazy people too there. So I ended up buying a ministry hat, one of those beanie hats. I was like, I got to get something. I hated his T-shirts. And after I saw what he looked like, I was like, I'm not buying one of your shirts. And he's smart enough. The man's smart and he knows I'm not going to take put a picture of what I look like now because he even though he's – I think that he looks like shit. Excuse my voice. So he was smart in that direction. I think I'm going to get really long tonight, long-winded at least. I'm trying to cut this off. But um, the show was totally crazy. 
I kept on going down one way streets the wrong way too after I left, and I didn't drink or smoke anything. And somebody fucking I parked in the uh, parking garage. Oh, Jim Steak, by the way, is what I was thinking of, folks. That's right across from the TLA. Um, Condemnation's still down in Philly, too. That's the only place that still exists from the original South Street. But I'm um, jumping around again. But, yeah, I parked in the parking garage right from across from the TLA. And some fucker pissed in the corner where my car was. So last night we are driving home, by the way, um, I turned on – it was like really cold. I was like, oh, great. I don't need the, I don't need the air conditioner on anymore. So I turn on just a vent and guess what comes through the vent? The smell of fucking piss. So I was really pissed off. No puns intended, but it really stunk. So I was like, I better take my car through the car wash almost. Anyway, I'm just babbling. On. I'm like extremely tired. I'm going to go out tomorrow. Um, oof. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at Robert – Ooh, he's got some really cute girls. Robert uh, Mukes. He's got some cute kids, too. Robert Mukes. No, I don't want to fuck them. I'm just saying he's got cute kids. Um, but he's got some – he's been at – he was at another uh, thing. I'm jumping around. I'm just looking around to keep my my mind from racing even more than it already is. Um, but anyway, yeah, that, that, that ministry concert, folks, was just – it was <coughs> – excuse me. It was crazy. Um, you had people uh, smoking weed, doing coke, yo. No, I'm just kidding. That was from Jay and Silent Bob. But they really were, and they were getting drunk. They were sloshed a lot of the people. Um, but they were – honestly, the people, the crowds were really harmless because you got to remember – maybe you – obviously, maybe – I don't know. Maybe you don't know, but back in the day when I started listening to ministry, the only people I knew to li- listen to ministry or skinny puppy – were uh, skinheads like they listened to other stuff too, but the skinheads were into that stuff like ministry. Because when you like like thought of ministry, you thought of Doc Martens with white laces or combat boots with white laces, white power. Because um, his songs basically appeal to that kind of genre, and it also appealed to me. And I'm not one of them, but it was just that it was, that's it was like hateful music. It was music that hated people. Period. So, but it was a good way to get rid of my my um, frustrating when it, f- frustrations when I got really angry. It was like I'll just listen to the ministry and I blow off some steam. I used to go to um, the nightclubs though, when I used to have alter- real alternative nightclubs, and they played all the music. And it would start out really like the techno type dance, and then at the end of the night, I got to the heavy techno of ministry. And it was like, dude, and I'd be sweating dancing back in the day. We'll go to these nightclubs that would play. Um, alternative music it was really fucking cool back then too so anyway that's why i was like oh my god i finally get to meet al jurgensen it was kind of a disappointment almost in many ways but it was a really good show either way the only thing is again i'm one of the prudes i don't i never drank i never smoked and i never did drugs i just am naturally just fucked up so um yeah so it was it was a nice relief uh, lease, I guess, of of excess energy. Uh, I felt bad for my friend Todd because he again has got his foot stomped on because um, it got pretty wild. Which one of the girls was stomped on me? Anyway, um, this show is very long winded again, so I'm going to let it go. I'm going to be down at a comic convention in Atlantic City. I think it's going to be on the boardwalk. So um, I'll probably be off again for this weekend. Nothing um, going on with me. So, everyone, have a good weekend, and I'm leaving this show end now.